We just hit April and we're already feeling behind. We've started zero seeds. We did get baby chicks last week, but it felt incredibly hectic leading up to that and we weren't sure how it would happen. And many of the plans that we had for the start of this year haven't come to fruition. Yes, there have been unforeseen circumstances, but as we've considered that reality of feeling behind, maybe that's not just okay, maybe it's better. Our day starts off with a 5 a.m. alarm clock, and not because we don't love sleep, we really, really do love sleep and probably wish we got more of it, but we also really value getting up early in the morning when the house is quiet before our kids get up and having some time to start off our day that way. So our routines look a little bit different between Jim and I, but kind of the, the main thrust is that we enjoy some time to ourselves and some quiet. So for me, I make myself breakfast and then I get outside as quick as I can and I go for a 30 to 45 minute walk around our property. This is such a valuable time for me to clear my head, to think, to pray, to process, and also just the act of being outside and moving my body makes such a big difference in just the overall trajectory of my day. Normally after this walk, I would be milking Thimble, our family milk cow, but right now she is dried up as we are waiting for her calf to be born in the next couple weeks. So chores look a little lighter for me right now. So after my walk, I head inside to get the kids a quick breakfast. Our standard go-to is scrambled eggs or over easy eggs with a little bit of yogurt and applesauce. They like to have a date or two alongside that. So that's what we're doing this morning. We don't do any daily vitamins or supplements really in our family, but the one thing that I like to do for myself and for our whole family is daily cod liver oil. So we do a teaspoon of the um, Rosita cod liver oil. I like to get the oil kind as opposed to you can get them in a capsule as well, but they're pretty big capsules. And if you price compare, kind of the bang for your buck, it's actually way, way better to get the oil than it is to get the capsules. So we just do a little teaspoon for I do it every day, usually with our kids we do it every other day, and they just eat it with food. Some of them like it more than others, but it goes down pretty easy. Every year there's a huge list of things we'd love to do on our homestead, and there's no shortage of inspiration out there, right? There's so many others in the homesteading community doing such cool and awesome and worthwhile things on their properties. And it's easy when you look at that for those feelings of pressure to creep in, pressure to keep up, pressure to do more. And all of a sudden that list of to-dos can just continually grow and spiral out of control because all these things are so awesome and we'd really love to be spending our time doing them. But in recent years, we've actually intentionally chosen to do less on our homestead and instead focus on doing the things that we're already doing better. A big part of that for us is including our kids more in what we are doing. So this year, they are our chicken apprentices. Our goal is to hand over chicken responsibilities specifically for our meat chickens and hopefully for our laying hens down the road. All right, should we fill some feeders and waters? Sure. What do you want to start with? Water. Water, all right, pull it on out. The hope is that this will pay off big in the future as our kids fully take on those responsibilities and are self-sufficient with raising our chickens. But right now it means going slow and taking extra time. So in the short term with the season of life we're in, we know we're not able to get to as much in our days right now, but the long-term investment is totally worth it. Maybe one more of those. We are raising 50 Freedom Ranger chickens for meat this year. And some things that we found really helpful is giving them both apple cider vinegar along with minerals and salt in their water. I was actually really excited recently to discover that 
The mineral salt that we give to our cows is actually suitable for poultry as well. And so I've started adding that to the chicks water and that seems to really help give them what they need, especially when they're this young. We've also started to add some extra black soldier fly larva to their feed. You could see the kids crumbling it up for them now so the little baby chicks can eat it, but that helps give them a little extra boost of protein. All right, here we go. Violin's up. After getting back from chores, we get our school day started. So Jim starts the day by practicing violin with our kids, and then that gives me the time to get something cooking for lunch. So today we're having a creamy Southwest chicken soup. We already had leftover chicken broth and chicken on hand from making a whole chicken a few days ago, and so this one's gonna come together really easily. I had already soaked and cooked some black beans, so those are ready too. So I'm just gonna saute some garlic and onion and a whole chopped sweet potato and get that cooking, and then I'm gonna add some flour. I like to add tapioca flour to make a roux, but you could also add just regular flour. So I add about a quarter cup of tapioca flour to it and stir that all in until you can't see the flour and that's just going to help thicken the soup. And then I pour in my broth. After that starts to boil, I'm gonna throw in the rest of the ingredients, so your spices and herbs. I'm doing a little bit of oregano, paprika, and cumin, and salt, and then your chicken and your black beans. And then once all that comes together and boils, then I'm gonna add about a cup and a half of cream to get that nice, thick, creamy texture. I'm just gonna toss the soup in our slow cooking oven so this is gonna keep it warm at about 200 degrees. You could also just keep it on a simmer on your stove top and then I can hop over and do some school stuff with the kids until lunchtime. I think homeschooling can be another area where I feel this pressure, pressure to keep up, pressure to stay on the schedule and not fall behind. And we've just had some unforeseen life circumstances come up over the last couple months that have meant not keeping up with our regular schedule. And so as I think about that, it can be a source of stress, but just realizing that we need to do the thing that is going to be the best for our family in our unique circumstances and not comparing ourselves to anyone else, any other families that I talk to or see on social media and realizing that we can do things at our own pace and at our own time. And the flip side of that is even though we might not be exactly where I'd like us to be on schedule, you know, book-wise and following the curriculum, our kids are getting so many unique experiences starting seeds, raising chicks, so many things that textbooks can't offer. You guys remember how to do this? Yep. All right. No. no. Not really. Not really. Okay. Well, so what happens is... Hold the hole, drop the seed in. Starting seeds is another area that can be a huge source of stress. And really comparison to, I see so many other gardeners out there who started their seeds weeks or months ago. And not only that, but they've got really professional, elaborate systems, and they've got their act together. And that's awesome, but that's just not where we're at. Here we are, and it's April already, and we're just getting started. So our system for starting seeds is about as basic as it gets. And we've done it for several years now, and it's been successful every year for us but we really just rely on the sun. We fill some seed trays with seed starting mix, plant our seeds, and then we find a south facing window in our home, or basically the window that captures the most sunlight, and put our seed trays in that window. 
leave them there, let our seeds germinate and grow, and every year we've been able to successfully transplant those seedlings outside in our garden. All right, let's start with two rows of basil. Two whole rows of basil? Yeah, where is our basil? What? How do, do I do it? Probably a quarter inch. The results can be a little hit or miss year to year, just depending on how much sun you're getting or not getting. And the seedlings aren't going to compare to a professional greenhouse setup or something like that. But like I mentioned, it gets the job done and it's worked out for us year after year. Most of the plants we grow on our homestead, we actually don't start from seed indoors. And so as the weather gets nicer, as we head further into springtime, we will direct sow a lot of crops into the ground directly. These are things like winter squash, corn, potatoes, and other root vegetables. And we also rely on a lot of different perennials. And these are the crops that we store and preserve that really help us feed our family year round. But we also love having a summer vegetable garden. So what we are starting here from seed are some tomatoes, peppers, cabbage, Brussels sprouts, some kale and other greens, and then some herbs. And over the years, we've really pared down on what we've grown to just keep it really basic in our garden. And starting seeds is another area we love to get our kids involved with as much as we can. It's such a cool thing for them to be able to plant those seeds in the soil, see them pop up, turn into plants that eventually go into our garden and produce food for our family. And so it's a really cool opportunity for some responsibility for them, but it's also a really cool connection for them to have to their food. One of the things we're gonna try for the first time this year is direct sowing our onion seed outside in our garden beds. And so in the past, we've always had a whole seed tray that was dedicated for onions. We started the seeds indoors, and we found that using our window sun method, the starts are pretty tiny and scrawny, and that makes them really hard and time consuming to transplant. And so I did some research into it and discovered that you can use a low tunnel over your garden beds as somewhat of a greenhouse to start seeds early outside. So I'm gonna try planting those onion seeds outside early, getting some sort of low tunnel system up and running with them. And so if you have any experience with this or have seen it done or have any recommendations at all, definitely leave us a comment. I'd love to hear from you and learn the best approach for doing this. So we'll see how it goes. So one of the big benefits of starting seeds the way we do is that it's really friendly on your budget. There's hardly any equipment you need up front and so it keeps costs really low. And another way we've discovered is really easy to save costs starting seeds every year is to make your own seed starting mix. And we've also found making our own to be more reliable too. We've both had the experience and heard of others having the experience of seeds not germinating well or just not great results with starting seeds in store-bought mixes and so it's another one of the reasons why we love making our own seed starting mix and it's a really simple process. So ours starts with compost. So I go out back to our compost pile, which is mostly cow and chicken manure that we've cleaned out of the barn over the winter time. And I grab some shovelfuls of compost that's really well broken down, throw that in the wheelbarrow. And there's two primary things I like to mix in with the compost. The first is peat moss. And peat moss helps absorb and maintain a lot of moisture. And the second is vermiculite. And this is a really light, airy material that helps give your seed starting mix kind of that light, fluffy texture that you want. And then from there, I just add in some different soil amendments. And so 
I've used fishbone meal or alfalfa meal in the past. Also things like worm castings or mushroom compost can work well. And really here what you're going after is adding extra nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium into your seed starting mix. So NPK, so add in some extra soil amendments or whatever you have on hand into your mix, into your wheelbarrow. Take your shovel, mix that all up really good until it's the right consistency that you want. And then what I do is just take my seed tray, put that in my wheelbarrow, and then fill it up with the seed starting mix and you're ready to plant your seeds. After lunch, we do quiet rest time. So this is a time when our younger two kids nap and then our older two will listen to audiobooks or play quietly. And this gives Jim and I a chance to have a few hours to get work done or do something else around the house or outside that needs to be done. So today there are three bananas that are staring at me that need to get used. And so I'm gonna turn these into one of our family's favorite peanut butter banana oat bars. I love these because they don't have any extra sugar or sweetener besides the bananas. So the bananas are the only sweetener, but they're plenty sweet. They also don't have any extra flour in them, just the oats. This is an easy one dish meal. You just mix everything up in a bowl, pour it in a pan and bake it. So it's super quick and easy. You're just gonna mash your bananas and add in some peanut butter and some milk. And then you're gonna add in your dry ingredients. So oats, I like to throw in some cinnamon and salt, your baking soda, mix that all up together. And then if you wanna add the chocolate chips, you can throw those in there, get them all mixed up. Pour them into your greased baking dish and then I like to add on top just a few extra chocolate chips and a little flaky sea salt. This is a black Hawaiian sea salt. It just goes really, really well with the sweetness of the bananas and the peanut butter, but you don't have to add the salt. It just is a really nice kind of fancy addition. We bake these for about 25 minutes. If you cook them on the left side, they're gonna be really ooey gooey, which I actually kind of like the ooey gooey texture. If you bake them a little longer, they'll hold together a little bit better, but these are so good. This makes a really good snack, or you could even have it for breakfast or dessert, because especially if you add those chocolate chips, it's a really nice sweet treat. Yeah, that's so good. And then we're gonna be having meatloaf for dinner tonight, which is always a winner in our house. I am not crazy about the really sweet, ketchup-y sort of meatloafs. I like, this is a more savory, cheesy meatloaf, so we do ground beef. I like to, instead of using breadcrumbs, I'll substitute almond flour or oats, and then we add in different herbs and spices, and an egg, and then a whole bunch of cheese. I'll put our exact recipe below, but mix that all together, bake it, throw some extra cheese on top, and melt that on there. And this is just a really easy, quick recipe that is definitely a favorite in our house. We're gonna serve this alongside some leftover mashed potatoes that we have. We are getting to the point where our potatoes are starting to get pretty soft and need to get eaten. And so things like mashed potatoes are a great way to use those potatoes once they start to soften because you're cooking them in water, you're boiling them. So that's adding some moisture back to those potatoes that are starting to get dehydrated. In a lot of ways, I think we create these videos to share the things that really we need to tell ourselves. And so as we were heading into April and we were feeling overwhelmed and feeling the pressure to do all the things and get all the things done, it made us step back and realize that it's gonna be okay. That even if we don't get half the things on our list done that we want to, that it's gonna be okay. And so if you are feeling that pressure as we head into the spring to do all the things, we would just encourage you to take a step back, figure out what your priorities are, look at it all with the big picture and perspective in mind that at the end of the day, greatness comes in the small things that add up over time. Mm -hmm.